In this demo, I'm going to show how you can use WordPress with volumes. Let's have a look at the files in WordPress volumes. Lots of files. Let's first start with storage.yaml. Here, I'm going to define a storage class, standard storage, GP2 type storage using AWS EBS volumes in the EU West 1A zone, because this is the zone that my Kubernetes cluster is running in. I have a storage class, so I also need a PV claim. And this is going to be the persistent volume claim for my database. So it's going to be called database storage. And I'm going to use eight gigabytes. And this is going to be the storage that is going to be used in the database pod. So let's have a look at this database pod, WordPress database.yaml. And I'm just using a very simple replication controller with only one replica, because I never want more than one instance of this pod running. It's going to be a MySQL 5.7, and I'm going to add the arguments ignore database directory loss plus found, because this directory loss plus found will exist in our directory where we're going to put our files. It will become clear in a few seconds. This is still the same. This is also the same. I'm just defining the root password, comes from the secrets. And then we have a volume mount. So we're going to mount slash varlib MySQL, and this is going to come from MySQL storage. MySQL storage refers to a persistent volume claim called DB storage. This one with eight gigabytes. This volume will be created by Amazon automatically. We don't have to create it ourselves. We'll then be mounted here. And because this is a new partition, a new volume with a partition on it, there is a directory loss plus found that is created in Linux. So that's why we're going to say ignore database directory loss plus found. Otherwise, our database will not start. Then we need a service for that. So we're going to create a service, WordPress database, which we then can use in our other pod, the one that is going to run the WordPress itself. Let me just show you the credentials. We also have WordPress secrets. So here we have the database password, which is a password. And these are all going to be used in the WordPress pod. We need to supply them because WordPress needs them and they need to be the same for every pod. Let's have a look at how these variables are used in the WordPress web.yaml. It's a deployment. We can run two replicas because this pod can horizontally scale. We're going to use still the WordPress 4 PHP 7. We define a WordPress database password, it's the same as in the MySQL. And then we define these, this out key, logged in key, and so on. Because those keys need to be the same for all the pods. We have two pods, so those keys need to be the same because your session might otherwise differ between the pods. So these we just need to do because of WordPress itself. And then we're going to add a volume mount. We're going to use a volume for this WordPress content uploads. In WordPress, you can upload pictures. We want these pictures to be available on all the pods. So we need to have some shared storage. On Amazon, we can use EFS for that, Elastic File System. This is an NFS file system. And this NFS file system is write and read on every node. Every pod that is going to mount this NFS can read and write to that. NFS is not fit for MySQL. That's why we are using block storage for that. But we can use it for images, for just storing small files. This is going to be the server. We just need to change the string because we have to create a new EFS volume first, because this is not auto-provisioned. And then it will mount this EFS right here. So let's see, did I cover everything? Well, we still have a service, a WordPress web service, and this is just going to put a load balancer in front of these two pods, that's so that we can connect to the WordPress using our browser. Let's create this EFS volume. We can use the AWS command for that. So first AWS 
EFS create file system, you need to specify a creation to token, which needs to be unique. I already used one, I'm going to use two. And this is going to create an EFS file system. Then we need to create an EFS mount target. We're going to create a mount target using this file system ID. So we're going to say dash dash file system ID and then this string that comes from here. And we need to create this in the same subnet ID as our cluster. So we need to figure out first the subnet ID of our cluster. In another window, you can do that with AWS EC2 describe instances. And then here, somewhere here, you're going to find one of your instances and it's going to be the subnet ID. So this is one of our instances. And we're going to use this subnet ID. Then we need a security group. And if two instances are in the same security group, then they can access each other. So we're just going to use the security group also from this node on Kubernetes. So this is a security group nodes Kubernetes new tech academy. So I'm going to use this security group. So it should work. And now it is creating. So we just need to take this string, the file system ID, and replace this in our WordPress web.yml. So this needs to be the zone EOS 1A for me and then the ID and then the region right here and then Amazon AWS.com. So this should work. So let's now create all the resources. Let's start with the database. So I'm going to kubectl create storage first, minus F storage. Then the PV claim, the secrets, and the database. Let's have a look whether, and the service immediately as well. And then let's have a look whether our volume is created. Yes. So this is the PVC, this is for storage. DB storage is bound. Okay. The secrets will be created. That's not very difficult. And then we have the WordPress DB. And this can take some time, of course. Describe pot. And it is pulling the image. So it mounted the persistent volume claim and it's pulling this image. So this actually created a new EBS volume for us. And this 8 gigabyte EBS volume is going to be used to store our MySQL data on. This container is started. Here you go. It's now running. So which one do we still need to create? Cube control, create, and then let's create the web services. It can take some time for the EFS to be created. So we have to be patient a little bit, but then we should be able to create the web and the service and the service is going to launch a load balancer. And if you want to use a proper DNS name, you can go to root 53. So if you go to root 53, then you can go to DNS management, your DNS name, and you could create a new record set. You could say WordPress, Actually, I already have one, but you could create a new one. Let me first delete the old one. So WordPress, it's an alias, and then it's going to load the ELB Classic Load Balancer. It takes a few seconds, and then we have our Load Balancer. So this is the Load Balancer created by Kubernetes. We click Create, and then we'll be able to access WordPress Kubernetes New Tech Academy. And here then we have our WordPress installation. So we just do the install. This is my blog. My username. This is auto generate password for me. Login with the same password. And then I have my WordPress running.
The main difference now is that two things. I have two pods running that are going to handle the web requests and one pod running that is going to handle the database. And the database data is saved in a volume. So I'm not going to lose it. I also have this EFS volume to create media or to upload, to be able to upload media. But there is a small bug here that will not allow me immediately to run media because look, if I select a file, it's going to say enable to create directory in this volume because this directory is not writable. And this is just because the image, the WordPress image was not built to be working on Kubernetes with these EFS volumes. So there are a couple of ways to fix this issue. You could just build your own image of WordPress and maintain your own image. Or what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the CMD when it starts. With the risk that if the CMD ever changes for this WordPress, then it might not work anymore. So I'll probably not commit this to my repository, but you can al always make the changes yourself to make this working. So let's say that we want to edit our deployment, the WordPress deployment. And then if you scroll down here at the container spec, you just add these commands, bash execute a command and then change the permissions or change ownership to the correct user and group of this directory and then run this docker entry point sh apache2 foreground so if this docker entry point would change in the future then this command doesn't work but you just would have to change it into the real command which you can find on docker hub so you save this and then we can test it so now let me refresh this page and I'm going to add a new file. And now it, it uploads. This is the file that I uploaded. And I can make a change to a post. My image, add media, this image, insert picture, update. And then this is my block. So let me show you that the volumes actually work. Cube, cube control get pot. And let me just delete this pot here. Delete pot. And let me delete those other pots as well. Uh. And I'm just going to delete this last pod as well. So all my pods are removed. And what's going to happen? Kubernetes is just going to spin up some new pods. So this one is creating again. And these ones are already running. So you just have to give it some time. And now everything is running again. Let's have a look at the logs. Of those things. WordPress successfully installed. Let's execute this pod. Let's execute bin bash in this pod. Let's have a look in our content, our uploads. And here we still have, here we still have our image. So even after I kill the pot, even after I delete the pot, we still have our image. Let me have a look at the database. Database started again. And then if I refresh, I still have all my data. Still available. Hello world with the image. Even after my pod was crashed, even after my node would be crashed, Kubernetes would just shuffle the pods to where there is capacity, detach and attach the volume when necessary, so that my block keeps on running. So that's it for this lecture, for this demo. I think this was a very useful demo to show the capabilities 
of Kubernetes. Some things I showed you are still in beta, so be very careful with those features, but it is all very promising. Also, when you clean up, make sure that you go to Elastic File Systems in AWS and you delete this file system. This is an EFS in AWS and you click on Delete File System because otherwise you will be paying for it.